My dream is that when a person finds out that they're pregnant, that they're not afraid, that they're gonna be mistreated by a system. They're not afraid they're gonna die in a hospital, not afraid that they won't be able to care for a baby afterward. We have these ancient practices that are successful, that are built on history, that are built on care, and it doesn't always translate into this patriarchal dominant model of medicine and care. That's why an organization like Black Health New Mexico comes into play, rerouting this narrative to centering the community, centering sacred and indigenous practices. We alter the system so that it can include ways that serve us. That's what we do at Black Health New Mexico is we create systems for our people. We often think of that trauma that's happening within the family, but so much of the trauma within black and brown communities is coming from the systems. <laughs> that then the families are having to navigate and deal with, mm -hmm. often without resources and support. The grassroots community orgs that are already doing the work, give them the money to do it. The answers are within our communities and within our organizations. We're doing a lot with a little. Part of the solution is having more midwives like Black Health New Mexico pushes. We need more Black midwives. We need more Black doulas. We need more in the system of care. And we're not, we're an option, we're back here. I don't see the mortality rate in my care that's happening in the other system of care. There's another way. We don't have to accept the only option that we are as a community being yes. presented with. There are individuals and communities within the state that are working across culture to shift and change things. When you get solidarity across cultures and across communities, it's really, it's really profound, beautiful, and completely unstoppable. In my prior pregnancies, I didn't have a lot of support. Unfortunately, I don't have a large family. I am pregnant with twins. I feel like this is my first pregnancy all over again. This is the first time that I'll be using a doula last summer. I took the Table Women United Doula training program. And that's where I met Kim. And I knew I wanted Kim. Janeka and I are working on prenatal visits and finding the things that are most important for her and her partner because a doula supports the partner and the whole family, making sure that they feel confident and ready for this experience. The twins, they're really pushing me to do a C-section. Unless it's medically necessary, I don't want to. Having Kim there to advocate for the things that I do and do not want, she'll be there to be like, you do have a choice. We have a really beautiful community of doulas in New Mexico. They've formed mentorship relations with one another. They learn from one another constantly. Tay Women United has been around for over 34 years. We are a Native women-led organization. We are a multi-movement, reproductive justice, environmental justice, gender justice, and healing justice. We service the northern New Mexico area. Our services are open to the diverse populations in this catchment area. It's a pretty comprehensive program for prenatal visits, labor and delivery support, for postpartum visits, and then two infant feeding support visits. And Tewa, there's a saying, the first 40 days for the next 40 years. The way a woman feels, heals, and is treated during the first 40 days postpartum can and will affect her mental health and well-being for the next 40 years. With social media nowadays, we make birth just seem like, oh, full face of makeup, the baby is here, and it's like, that is not how it happened. I'm not going to romanticize it, it's not easy. If you get a group of postpartum women together, it'd be like war stories. And the more you're able to have full control over your birth environment and who's there and what type of support you have, it doesn't have to be this massive war story. We did do a home birth with our first child and that was mostly out of circumstances of the pandemic. The plan this time around, we wanted to give birth outside in our cornfield which has a lot of spiritual significance. 
the beauty of it was also very calming to me. We were really trying to find the exact like team that we wanted because we knew we had a birth experience that was gonna be a little difficult <laughs> to achieve. So we needed to get like the dream team together. <laughs> a lot of people think a doula is the same thing as a midwife, but a doula is not a midwife. A doula is a non-medical support person. And what we do is we support our clients' physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. We keep an eye on them. We'd make sure that mom is taken care of. Because when baby's born, everybody wants to take care of baby and they just kind of forget about mom. Several people she approached thought her birth plan was crazy, but I was like, hey, you know, our ancestors used to have babies outside all the time. We can make this happen. I felt very calm with the team around me and with my partner there. It was very emotional when baby was born. For a while there, all of us did cry a little bit because we're like, dang, we made it happen. It was a long, hard, what, three days, I believe, <laughs> the induction process. Yeah, it was pretty rough. My son's Pablo Cisneros. He is gonna be three in December. He loves to learn. You can tell that he's absorbing a lot of stuff. He was small. He was five pounds, four ounces. He wasn't growing at the rate they said that he was supposed to. I am currently still nursing him. He's actually been the longest that I've nursed two and a half years. It is benefiting him a lot, for sure. You can see it in his development. I am a part of the Mexico Breastfeeding Task Force. I am the secretary for the Valencia chapter. The New Mexico Breastfeeding Task Force is a nonprofit statewide breastfeeding lactation coalition. Our goal is to support families and communities to create environments where lactation is a norm and human milk is available for all infants and children. Breastfeeding is a little bit more normalized. We're trying to make parents feel comfortable with what they're doing and not ashamed. 84% of families initiate lactation. By six months, there's a big drop off. We know the benefits. Breastfeeding, chest feeding is good for babies. And now they're learning that breastfeeding and chest feeding is good for the parents themselves. There's less risk of postpartum depression, less risk of hypertension, diabetes, premenopausal breast cancer. The problem is the lack of resources, especially in the rural communities. Our goal is filling in those gaps so that families know when to seek help and where to find it. New Mexico is waking up now, waking up to the fact that maternal health is a really important piece of the growth of our communities. You can't have healthy societies without having healthy people, and you can't have healthy people without having healthy families. Maternal health matters because that's if we have a good start, then we have a better outcome. All people should have that good start. Our communities would be healthier, they would be happier. We would all be in a better place. We have now helped them raise a generation that will do the same, and on and on. Maternal health matters because we all need to be healthy. Maternal health matters because the future of our children is in the hands of our mothers and the communities of support. Maternal health matters because mothers matter, because babies matter, because women matter. <laughs>